What if I told you there was a way to objectively and accurately assess your performance levels in real time, every single time you step in the gym, to help you optimize and find the perfect training stressor for every single session? That's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video. It's an order regulation and readiness system or strategy to apply to your training using velocity data to help you find that optimal training stress and maximize your gains, whether it be strength or power. So whether you're a power lifter or a strength athlete looking to maximize your 1RM on the platform, or you're an athlete looking for transfer from the gym, say in a strength and conditioning or an athletic development situation, this idea, this system works perfectly. It also applies and integrates nicely with things like RPE and percentage-based programs. So no matter how you train currently, this system can help you maximize your gains and get more out of your session by assessing readiness in real time. Along the way, I'll provide you with some free tools and some tips and tricks to apply this and get the most out of your training for yourself or the athletes you work with. First, let's cover some basics. So performance isn't static. It changes based on a number of factors on a day-to-day -day and even an hourly basis. I really like this little case study that took three power lifters and had them do a one RM squat every day for 36 days. It's a horrible training program, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can see how much each of those individuals fluctuated on a day-to-day -day basis in their strength levels. Sure, the trend is positive and they are getting stronger over the course of the, the weeks, but there were changes day-to-day -day because of that variability. Now we call these performance fluctuations readiness or readiness to train. And basically it's the balance between how motivated, aroused, warmed up, fired up you are for a session compared with, say, uh, your fatigue or tiredness or stress that you might have brought into the gym. So if you're in a state of low readiness, you're accumulating fatigue over a hard training block, you're in exams at school, work's really getting you down, all these things compound and lower performance. Now, pushing through one session like that's not going to be the end of the world, but if you do it repeatedly, so continually push an athlete who's in low readiness through hard sessions that they're not really ready for, they might need a little more slack in the system. So they might need a slightly easier session to accommodate some more recovery, allowing them to bounce back. There's good research that pushing athletes that are already fatigued into more fatigue and into uh, harder sessions when potentially they need that lighter session is actually not beneficial in both the short and long term when it comes to their progress on strength, power, athleticism, whatever the case might be. Balance here though is you need a good way to measure readiness. So if readiness is changing on a daily basis, how do we assess that? There's kind of two ways. The first is a general assessment of readiness. That's things like heart rate variability, maybe things like a sleep score or a sleep tracker, uh, subjective questionnaires, body weight, hydration status. These give us a general idea of where we are at physically in a broad general sense. But if you're a strength athlete or you're performing uh, strength movements in the gym, we want a specific objective measurement of that readiness to do that specific exercise in real time. And there's not really many better measurements than velocity. So velocity or power output on that bar is a really good indicator of your neural freshness, your ability and your uh, status in real time and how well you're gonna go in that session. The trick to velocity though is a single session doesn't tell us much. So just recording between across your warm up sets in one session doesn't tell us much about your readiness. We need to create a history and a context for each individual so we can compare today's session with that athlete's performance from the past. Every individual has a unique load velocity profile for each exercise. Training history, strength levels, gender, limb length, technical issues, stance width, grip width, all these variables will subtly change your load velocity profile. So while fixed velocity zones can have some applications when it comes to programming or goal setting in the gym, they aren't very good readiness tools. So instead what we need to do is we need to create a historical and a contextual picture for each individual, using today's velocity numbers and comparing it to an individual's recent history on a movement and a weight will give us a good indication of progress over time, but also those fluctuations will show us and highlight low and high readiness days. Let's look at an exercise as an example. So for me, on my bench press, when I'm warming up my sets, I always do the same weights. 40 kilos, then 60, then 80, and then a ramp up single at 90 before I go into my work sets. When I do those consistent weights, what I do is I log my best rep velocity, or the fastest rep for each set, in my logbook. I like fastest rep or best rep because it's a nice, clean, focused number. It's not determined by the volume or the number of reps I do in a set. Things like last rep, set average, they can be a bit noisier, whereas best rep is a really clean indicator of my neural freshness and my readiness to train. Then next week I come to the gym and I do that same warm up, 40, 60, 80, and that single at 90. I then again log best rep velocity. Now already from this second session, we can start doing a bit of readiness assessment. 
I can compare today's best rep velocity, 40, 60, 80, 90 on each of those sets with the corresponding weight from last week. Ideally, this week's velocity would be slightly faster than last week on all those sets, suggesting I've made progress, I'm a bit stronger, and I'm well recovered. So my bench press readiness is in a good place, I'm ready for a big session. The problem here though, is when you only use one session worth of data to compare for readiness, it can become quite noisy. So if you have a really good session one week, the next week might be pretty solid, but by comparison, it doesn't look as good. And so you might be like, well, is that low readiness? Or is it just that last week was amazing and this week's only decent? Instead, what we want to do is we want to try and smooth out the data and get a better sort of rolling idea of where we're at so we can smooth out those highs and those lows to give us a better measuring stick. And so what I like to do for that is use a 30-day average. I take today's velocities and I compare it to four, maybe five sessions worth of that same exercise to get an average picture of what I've been like in the last month. Now, ideally, you should be able to lift faster at each of those weights than you have for the average of your last 30 days. Now that we've established this method for measuring our readiness by comparing today's best rep velocity for a weight with our 30 day average across our warm up set, we need a way to apply this. So, the next step is to do what's called auto regulation. And auto regulation is a fancy term that really just means flexible and adaptive training. So, instead of having a fixed, rigid program, we're adjusting when needed. So, if, low, if we're in a state of low readiness, we adjust the session down maybe dropping some reps, cutting some volume, tweaking things to allow some space to recover. If we're in a state of good readiness or high readiness, then we get after it, we complete our normal session. Now I think the big mistake people make is they think that autoregulation is about wild swings. One week you completely miss a session because you've got low readiness, you go back home, you go to bed. Uh, if you're in high readiness, then you chase crazy PRs. It's all about these wild swings, but that's not the case. Instead, what we want to do is we want to look for little nudges. Maybe it's you take a rep off here, or you add a rep there, or you go a little heavier with your progression, or a little less with your progression. So it's tiny little tweaks and nudges only when we need it, only when the, order the readiness data tells us we should, or suggests we should auto-regulate. If we dive into the specifics now, my favorite way to use this 30-day average is to do what I call traffic light training. What we're doing is we're going to color code today's velocity compared to that 30 day average based on what the score is. So if you're above 97.5% of your third average, that's a green light. Between 92.5 and 97.5, that's a yellow, and then under 92.5 is a red. And the colors are exactly what you think. So green for go, yellow, maybe low readiness, maybe not, we'll talk about that in a second. And then red, 92.5% of your third average and below, that's probably a state of either low readiness or low intense. You either need to pick up the effort, train a little harder and try and lift a little more explosively, or you are in fact fatigued and you need to adjust today's session. By logging velocity on dates for each exercise across time, we create a rolling training history that gives us a good indication of where we're at in our readiness in real time. Get lots of green lights and you get a session that looks something like this. Green lights across all the warm sets and then a couple of blue cells there which suggest velocity and load personal bests. So they're the fastest and the heaviest I'd lifted in those exercises at that time. On the flip side, here's a low readiness day. Reds and yellows across the board, bars moving slow, feeling sluggish, did not chase the top work sets that I was planned on, did a couple of easy triples at a moderate weight and then left it, moved on to my other exercises, got home and started recovering. Here are a few important tips and tricks to help you get more out of the system. Firstly, green is set at 97.5%, not 100%, because the goal is to get green lights. We don't want to auto-regulate training, we only apply it when we have to. So 97.5, close enough, pretty much the same as our 30 day average, that's enough of a green light for us to then progress with a normal session. The yellow zone is kind of up for you to make your own decisions and interpretations, either on your own or with the help of your coach. It's deliberately ambiguous. So is it yellow because you're applying low intent, you just need to pick things up, or you're taking a little longer to warm up than normal, or are you in a tough block? And so you're in week five of a tough six week block. So yeah, you expect velocities to be low, but you've got a taper coming up in a fortnight. So it's not worth backing off this session because there's no comps coming up. We're designed, we're supposed to be pushing hard right now. On the other side though, is it unexpectedly yellow? You should be in a good state of readiness, but you're not. Maybe that suggests you should tweak the session, or maybe if you get yellows multiple weeks in a row, then you tweak the session. If you get reds, you can still get good quality training done. You just might need to back off the intensity or the volume. One of the easiest ways to do is, instead of doing your work sets at a given volume, you just take one rep off the volume. So four sets of five just becomes four sets of four, or three sets of five, you don't do that last work set. 
If that's not enough, you can take a few kilos off the bar, maybe take it back by two, maybe 5% of the load. Or if you need to, if it's really bad and you're, you've got red lights and you're feeling like rubbish and it's just not gonna be a good day, skip your main work sets. Move on to your accessories, your bodybuilding, your, your isolation stuff. Get some rehab work in, some time and attention, stuff that isn't gonna drain you nearly, but still get a bit of a pump and a bit of work done. Low velocities can also be motivational. So if you get some reds and yellows on your first couple of warm sets, on the next one, give it a little bit more effort. Put a little more intent into the bar and see if you can't pick that velocity up. If you can't, it's probably a readiness thing and you might need to adjust the session. But if you can, maybe you're just going through the paces or taking a little longer to warm up on those first sets. And so gave you a little bit of a kick up the bum to get more out of that session. Because this system uses multiple warm-up sets and multiple weeks worth of data to assess your readiness, you're gonna get ties. You're gonna get situations where you've got a couple of yellows, a couple of greens, maybe a red, and you're like, well, what do I do? Here's my tips for that. The first thing I would suggest is put more weight into your later sets than your early sets. Early sets, light ones, are gonna have an upper biomechanical limit where they won't really get much faster than a certain threshold for you as an individual. So put more weight in your later sets. Also, as you warm up, the later sets will be more of an indication of how ready and how good you're lifting on a given day. If after doing that, the results are still split and you can't make up your mind, do your first work set as normal. So maybe you repeat last week's weight or you follow the planned progression, but do that work set and use that as the tiebreaker. So if you can't pick things up and get a green light on that fourth set or maybe that first work set, whatever the case might be, then you can go, okay, well, I am probably in a little bit of a low readiness state. Subjective factors are also valuable to assess here too. Uh, but then you can make your decision. So, okay, do the first work set as normal. No, still low. All right, I'm only going to do two work sets today, not three. Or the next two sets, I'm going to take five kilos off the bar. Or I won't follow that progression I had planned. So whatever your program suggests, you might make a more conservative decision on that. And so that's it, an objective but flexible way to apply velocity in your training to assess readiness and then auto-regulate training decisions in real time. Uh, it's an open system, so if you find a better way to apply this, if you like a 90-day average instead of a 30, or you find a new approach to this, comment below, let me know what you think. But also in terms of tools, uh, I log all my velocity data using the VBT Coach logbook, which is linked below, you can get that for free on my website. And I then uh, record and track all my velocity data using the Metric VBT app. Uh, full disclosure, I work at Metric VBT, I'm helping to build that app. We're working on features to incorporate this readiness tool, these readiness ideas into the app so you'll have it there in real time and no need to use the logbook in the future. So that's it. Keep an eye out for those updates on Metric. Go check it out below. Comment if you have any ideas on how to make this system better or any tweaks that you've tried. Uh, and happy lifting. Enjoy. Enjoy.